we're not selling product here at the show, okay? So I'll start off by telling you, I'm not trying to sell you on Navionics. I hope the one thing that I'll do here to, this afternoon is educate you on Navionics. No matter what kind of card you previously own, I want to be able to educate you on what you have, what you can do to make it better, and tell you some of our little shortcuts of stuff that's actually on your chart you probably didn't even know existed. Um, one of the things when I started working for this company two years ago that I honestly felt they weren't doing was talking to you people. And what I mean by that, we would have pro staffers come and set up a booth for the show and they'd fill out this little form and they'd send it back, but they never met anybody from the company. And uh, my previous employer, one of the things we always emphasized on was, we need to be there. We need to be, hey, I want to talk to somebody from Navionics. Well, you just found Tom Branch, that's who I work for. What can I help you with? That's my philosophy. I, and, I, and I said it before when we were getting started. Everybody that works full-time for our company fishes, boats, and cruises, and sails. To me, that's incredible. Um, that's one of the things, probably the, one of the most important things I'll tell you about Navionics. We've grown from a small two-man business that was started in 1984. We, uh, this year, celebrate 35 years of being in the mapping business. That's pretty huge. Nobody else out there has been doing it as long as Navionics. They have a name. We employ over 500 people. In the United States alone, we have about 50 people, but our company is worldwide. Our office main headquarters is in Italy. Um, I've been there one time and it's pretty awesome. <laughs> but uh, they're near the water, a lot of sailors, a lot of cruisers. The United States is our fishing industry. That's where the catfish, the crappie, the walleye, the bass, that's why we are 50% of our business throughout the world. And that's what we do. The difference again, like I talked about, is everybody that works for us, so I guess I gotta take skiers off there now. We don't have a skiing app anymore, but we used to have snow skiers. Everybody's boaters and outdoors people. The thing, and I, I talked about it before, and I like to reemphasize it is, when you reach out to our customer service, you're not talking to somebody in India. You're talking to somebody in New Bedford, Massachusetts, that is either a boater, sailor, or fishing person. And they can help you, I promise you, they can. The best thing to do, I tell people this all the time, we changed this three years ago, and I think it works pretty good. I got the experience of myself last week. Um, we have an online chat. So if something's going on with your electronics, for me personally, I was having a problem with my new Ford truck. So I went on Ford.com and got on their chat line and started talking to them about what was going on with my truck. And it works the same way at Navionics. You can just go online, type a question. If you don't feel like computer deal is not your deal, you leave them your phone number or in your email address and they'll follow up with you. Can't make a promise when they'll call you, but they will call you back. It's not gonna be as quick as the chat thing that's going on right now. Last year, we kind of set history and we set the world on fire. And the one thing I tell everybody when we start these uh, seminars is if you own a Navionics app, raise your hand if you're here. Folks, last year in the United States and all over the world, we sold seven million apps. That's why Navionics is the number one leader in navigation throughout the world. It's unbelievable to me that the people that I meet at these shows like this just love what we're doing with our product. There is some glitches, we're trying to get better. We, we listen to our customers, that's one thing I can tell you. But we did, last year we sold uh, that many. We do have a new look for 2019. You're gonna notice that our products look a little bit of di different. We have gone away from the plastic uh, storage holders that we used to have. There's still uh, plenty of them floating around, but now we've gone to a cardboard package. Um, we have some samples at the booth if you'd like to see them afterwards. And we've also put a, what I call security tape um, on the side of them. So now you, you don't know, they you can tell they've been open, but it also, identifies the region or area of that chart uh, on the chart itself. So you've got a little piece of white tape on the side of it. Also in uh, 2019, we've changed our app look. We've gone away from the uh, one on the far right to the new look. If you haven't uploaded the app, the, the, uh, the renewal part of it, it will change from where it used to be $5 to renewal. Now it's gone up to $14.99. But I think when I go through this presentation, you'll see some of the additions we've done to the app, and it's actually better. 
Um, the biggest difference I'll tell you is the guy that's or lady that's fishing that's running a tablet, they've been paying $50 for that app. And we sold some of them, okay? Now it's $14.99, either app or telephone. So that's, that's really a great deal that we've done. I tell people all the time, my, I got one of the coolest jobs in the world. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I try to take pictures of everywhere I get to go and fish. My wife gets mad at me most of the time, but my buddies are really jealous. Um, I love smallmouth. I caught my first peacock bass in May down in Florida, and I live on the greatest spotted bass lake in the United States, and that's uh, Lake Lanier, just north of Atlanta. Um, I, Ever since I was a kid, I fished for everything. I don't have it. I told uh, Greg was making fun of me. I got to have a catfish picture this year and a crappy picture and a walleye picture because I've caught all of them, but I just don't have a picture of one. But uh, hopefully next year I can do that. So 2019, some of the product changes that you'll see, we're going to review those. We'll also go into detail a little bit about the app. I'll talk about Garmin Maps a little bit to give you an idea of the future. And then I really, the, the other thing I focus on is just the general features of the charts, and then we'll finish up with some questions and answers. 2019, we're doing something for the first time we've ever done, and this is to help our customers that are, uh, I would say, non-computer savvy um, is probably a good way to say it. And we've started a trade-in program. It's going to run from January 1 to December 31st, all throughout 2019. And what this means is if you're an old subscriber to Navionics card, let's say you got a card that's three years old, you've got a competitor's brand card that you're not happy with, the quality of it, you can take that card and go to wherever you purchase your fishing supplies from and buy a new Navionics card and you can get a refund of either $50 or $75 depending on the card. All you have to do is create, uh, we have some envelopes out here at the booth, there's also an online form if you want to use it. Um, you print it out, fill out the information, you mail in the old card or the card you're trading in with the coupon, with the uh, form and a copy of your receipt, and you'll get $50 or $75 back. And what that does, it gives you a fresh new card with the most updated data. You also get another year of updates you can do for free. If you are computer savvy, and we'll talk about, I don't remember, we didn't really go into detail on this because I didn't do it with this user promotion. If you are computer savvy, for the month of February in 2019, we have a free update. It's not free, it's half the price. Instead of, it's $50 to update any chart that you own for Navionics. You can go to navionics.com and follow the instructions. It's simple. If you've got a little computer savvy to you, you can probably do it. But uh, that, that's just something we're running all 2019. Some of the people ask all the time about daily updates, what it is, what it does. Uh, I'm a fisherman just like you folks that are here today. I update my charts monthly. I, even though I work for the company, I still don't know where they've mapped at. If you follow the fishing world at all, uh, just over uh, uh, last week, one of our pro guys, Edwin Evers, won a, le a tournament at Lake Conroe on Major League Fishing. The cool thing what Edwin learned was we had just finished mapping that lake a month ago. He updated his chart. He got some new data that the other competitors didn't have on their maps. So he learned a couple places to fish, and he actually ended up at the very end of the tournament catching an eight-pounder in a cove that we had mapped that he didn't know about. So I, took, I, I stole this screenshot. It's kind of hard to tell. In 2018, all over the world, we updated 870,000 lakes over the last 12 months. That's unbelievable. This little small section that you see right here is the 130 lakes that we updated just in the United States. So there's no reason not to update your car. I mean, that's crazy. Right now, we have eight boats on the water. They just finished working uh, a couple lakes in California, Arizona, and the lake that I talked about at Conroe. Now they've started headed south. Uh, a customer came by earlier and was asking me, hey, what about so-and-so lake in Pittsburgh? It's not mapped. I understand that. Not every lake is mapped. The best thing you can do is go to our website, navionics.com, 
and go to the feedback section and get you and your buddies to write emails in and write information in about the particular lake. They'll ask you some questions about Latin Long, where is it located, how many acres you think it is, examples like that. And then as those build up on a, our stat sheet, they'll go and map that lake. Um, you won't see this big giant boat that says Navionics because we don't advertise where we're at. Uh, that's just a safety deal. But we've had people like last year prior to the Mille Lacs Bassmaster Tournament, one of our guys said, hey, I saw six boats on the lake over the last month. I think we should update our charts. Well, he knew because he called me and I told him, hey, I just found out they are mapping that lake. But I don't know. I mean, that's what I tell people all the time. I can find out where they're going if I ask the right people, but they're always working their way. If you live in the northern United States and your lake is frozen, trust me, they're not mapping that lake right now, okay? They'll map that lake. You might see the boats in August or September when it warms up, but they make their way all around the country. And like I said, we got eight boats in the United States that just focus on mapping. Uh, the last I'd heard, somebody asked me the other day, when's the last time you heard they were somewhere? About a month ago, all eight boats were down around Apalachicola, uh, Pensacola, north to Apalachicola, mapping that area through there. And the only reason was because of the hurricane damage, we knew that some areas changed there, and we try to stay ahead of that game. So if, if the water's clarity and we can do it, then our boats go and they map that area. So that was the last time I'd heard them. So uh, one of the things people ask me all the time is, okay, I see these packages are pretty cool, so what comes in the box? What comes in the box is what we call an SD card reader, a storage card, and a micro SD card. If you ever lose this card, it's okay. All your data is on the micro card. Um, one of the things a lot of people get confused about is which charts and which one. All that uh, on the right hand side, all that is is a storage thing for the micro SD. Currently all our micro SDs are 16 gigabyte. Um, if you have an older card, you might have a 2 gigabyte micro card. I, it wouldn't surprise me. If you can't update that card for some reason, you can go on our website and, and fill out the information talk to a customer service, they'll let you mail it back and they'll send you a new card and replace it also as long as it's still under warranty and everything's covered. If you can't update it, for example, with the new sale that's going on right now and you can't update your card, all you can do is get on the customer service, tell them, they'll swap your cards or whatever. Usually you have to mail yours back and they have to check it and make sure it's the right card. But every one of our packages, when you open it up, it has a card reader here and it has your card here. This right here is a stop sign that we started putting on our product about two years ago. Um, can't say it was my idea, but it was one of the best ideas I've seen in a long time. But it tells you to register your charts. One of the thing, the biggest problems for my job as a promotions manager is trying to get people to register those cards. Last year in the United States alone, the, the Navionics US and Canada chart was purchased by over 100,000 people, all right? Out of that 100,000 people, only 180 of them registered their chart. That's sad, okay? And the reason why I say that it's sad is because you didn't get the most out of your chart. You're buying a bundle from Lawrence or Cimarad or, or Ray Marine, and you get a free map card inside, you still gotta register that card so you can download and get the one foot contours and have the best mapping. If you don't download on the bundle uh, deals, all you get is nautical charts. Nautical charts are like 10, 10 feet. That's the depth you get. So you don't get the, the actual contour lines and that's very important. Our, our cards, if you've purchased a card, you have 60 days to register it. If it goes 61, 62, it's no big deal. Um, they'll, they'll work you through that. If for some reason you have a card and you've never registered it before, you can still renew it. And, and like I said, till the end of February, it's $50. That's probably a good idea to do. Um, I guess one, one, a couple people asked me about the charts. All the charts are encrypted. 
Uh, there's been some people that have tried to break it. It hadn't worked. Uh, trust me, we have a lot of guys over in India that do this for us. They're pretty good. Uh, and I, I don't know of anybody that's broke the code on it. Um, I don't even, I can't even do it myself and figure it out. I'm not that computer savvy. I'm going to try to go through the products pretty quick just to give you an idea of what each one of the Navionics products are. And, uh, and we'll finish up with uh, talking about the app a little bit too. Platinum Plus Series is, a, is the high-end uh, ocean maps that we sell. They have everything that you can think of on them. Uh, they range from $199 up to $499. Those map cards come with, uh, they're great for ocean fishing or offshore fishing. Sailors love them also. They have what we call panoramic pictures. They also have satellite uh, overlay and they also have our sonar chart one foot contours. If you fish anywhere offshore uh, within five miles, you can do a Nav Plus region, it'll be fine. If you're going offshore greater than five miles, you're gonna want this kind of card if you're fishing that area. The um, Platinum Plus, uh, Platinum Hot Map series is, is a takeoff from the Platinum, but it's all fresh water. There's nothing offshore or salt water on it. You still get uh, panoramic pictures, you still get 3D and uh, satellite over, overview. Um, the cool thing about this particular chart, it's divided up in five different regions, south, east, north, west, and also the sea is a Canada. The Canada card, we had to separate it from all the other ones because of the Canadian government wants their kicking amount of money for when we give out charts and we sell a chart to you guys. Um, one thing we're doing, we did this year for 2000, well we did it last year, 2018 we did a test and we put Tennessee in the east and the south as a test to see how it would work. We wanted to see if it sold any different amount of charts and we really didn't do anything. The one thing I can tell you is that if a lake is a border lake, and I'll just tell you for example, Georgia, I'm very knowledgeable about that. There's, a, there's a, a, a row of lakes in Georgia that start at uh, Lake Hartwell, go to Lake Russell, and go to Clark Hill. The lake is in two states. So it is in the east and the south. If, if you buy a lake that is on a borderline state, it will be in both, both ones. So if you're going to Clark Hill, it doesn't matter if you have a south or east, you still get the full lake uh, coverage. That's kind of important. Um, the future, what do I see the future is on mapping? I, don't, I was telling a customer earlier today, I don't remember who I was speaking to, but I, I really think if we could get the, uh, a 32 or maybe even a 64 gigabyte card, we probably could divide the United States in half, north and south, uh, or uh, east and west, and draw a line right down the middle. Um, we've talked about that for two years since I've been with the company. The problem we run into is we don't control the processor that's within your electronics that you're using. So if, we, if you get a 64 gig card, for example, you put it in an in a inexpensive unit that doesn't have a high speed processor, you're going to get mad because the map's not reading correctly. Um, it happened to me with a, a Lowrance uh, Elite series when it first came out. I put my hot maps in there, it wouldn't read my card. I have a little aluminum tracker, a 17 and a half foot bow that has 60 horsepower. I was out running my maps. And I mean, I'm calling Lawrence, I'm calling Navionics people, everybody I know going, hey, what's the deal? And that's what we ended up saying is the speed of the processor controls everything on your map card. So even if we put more data on that card, it might take you a little bit more time for it to process. So I don't know if that'll be good or bad. Um, the interesting thing is I'll tell you, and we'll get into it in a few minutes, I'll tell you about the Garmin map and coming. That's part of our test dummy. We did on the Garmin maps when they release them the end of this month, there'll be an east and a west. And we're going to try it and see what happens. Uh, Garmin purchased Navionics back in October, and they are the most open-minded people I've ever, ever worked for in that if you suggest something, you show them how it's going to work and it'll prove that it'll work, they're going to try it. And uh, we're pretty excited about that. But going back to the hot maps again, the hot maps, like I talked about before, you get 3D, you get satellite overlay, 
panoramic pictures and that sonar chart one foot contours. Um, the other map that we sell, and a lot of people have purchased these through a bundle like we talked about earlier, is the U Navionics Plus US and Canada. Again, I emphasize, please register this card so that you can get the sonar chart, so you can download the lakes you want on it. It has all of US and Canada on it, but it's all nautical charts. It's not the detailed mapping you want if you live at Douglas Lake in Tennessee. You gotta pick that lake and you gotta download it and I'll show you how to do it in a second and, and put it on that card. Um, the US and Canada, same way, it comes the same package. It has a built-in sonar chart layer that you have to download. It's very simple to do. All you do is select what kind of unit. I did this with mine at home. I've got a Lowrance Gen 312 on my boat right now that I'm running. I select the, the uh, type of plotter that you have, and then you, then you pick the area you want. This was a river. I don't even remember where this was. I don't remember where this was. I selected a river stream area. The cool thing about this, just to educate you a little bit on it, you don't need any more nautical charts to go on here. What you really want is the sonar charts, and you want the community edits. We'll go into detail about what they are here in a minute, but those are two things to select. If you update nautical charts, it's gonna update the whole chip of nautical charts, and you don't really need that. You, the sonar charts is where you get your one foot contours. Once you update the, the chip, you'll get a little check mark saying it's done. You can remove the card and install it, and then you can see over here on the right hand bottom side, that's what one foot contours look like. If you don't know what it looks like in person, Stop by our booth down there, and I'll be glad to show you. We've got it on all the plotters that you can see over there. Um, again, this is just saying, this one I checked nautical charts, and you can see it's going to load almost all that data onto that chip, and it's going to be over halfway full. Again, going back to what I said before about computer cards, the more stuff you load on the computer card, the harder it is for your processor to work. So think about that. You don't really need that. The Navionics Regions cards are preloaded with nautical charts and, and sonar charts. A lot of people that are not computer savvy love this card because they can put it out of the box, register it. I hope they do that. If they don't, they can plug it right in their unit and they go fishing. Um, there's not a whole bunch of computer work. This computer stuff's not hard, folks. It's, it's a step-by-step -step process that we've been working with people that don't have nothing to know anything about fishing and computers and trying to teach them how to do it. But the Navionics regions are built in that way. One of the charts that we sell that's not a big seller, but it's, it's something to educate you on. If you're a user of a Lake Master or CMAP card, this is something you ought to think about because you might be going to lakes that Lake Master hasn't mapped or CMAP hasn't mapped. But with this card, you get it for $99 and you go at home and it's uh, preloaded with US and Canada, just like the nautical, it'll set and validate your card, the previous card that you had, and you can use this card in your unit. Um, go back again, uh, I'm talking bass fishing here, the catfish thing, but Lake Martin, Alabama is not a Lake Master Lake. Those guys fished over there a year and a half ago, and every one of the hummingbird guys, I would say almost all of them called me, trying to get a Navionics chart and I sent them to Bass Pro. Um, that's the best place to buy it. I told them, I don't know where you're at, but if you're in Alabama, go over there and buy one. Um, because their Lake Master hadn't mapped that particular lake. Somebody was asking me earlier, we're known to have mapped over 80,000 lakes. Lake Master has about 20,000 lakes on theirs. So depending on where you live, it, it might help you or hurt you, whichever one. But. Uh, we're on averaging about 800 new lakes a year that we're mapping. This particular map card, it does have one foot contour detail. You just have to validate the card. So you plug in your card reader, you plug in the new card, it says, oh, this is a Navionics update card. Please plug in your blah, blah, blah card. You pull out your Navionics card, you plug in your old card, it validates it. Okay, yeah, you got that card pull it out, you put the new card in, and then you update it again. So uh, it works great with uh, any of the other brands. 
Uh, only thing I'll tell you about Lake Master, one of, somebody was asking me earlier, if you have the uh, Lake Master chart with the uh, Johnson Outdoor Trolling Motor iPilot to follow contours, it won't work. Lake Master is the only chart that works with that feature. Go into a little bit of detail about the advanced features that are available in Navionics charts. With the Lawrence and Ray Marine, we have a new feature called Dock to Dock Auto Routing. This is a great, great tool for you to use if you're pre-fishing for a tournament. And let's say you've located the fish at a certain depth. You can go on our chart viewer on the computer, pick the areas you want to fish, and then you can create you a route. And then you can actually transfer that route onto your depth finder if it's a Ray Marine or a Lawrence unit. We have a feature called Sonar Chart Live where you can make maps, and then we'll go over some of the um, uh, ideas and advanced features. But this is a Ray Marine unit. What you do is select the waypoint, select the ending place, and then, at the, and then it, it hits it and does all the little magic stuff and draws you away. We also have a way to do Sonar Chart Live. I, I don't have time to do this, but I told somebody the other day, one of the coolest things I've ever done with this, a buddy of mine has a 10 acre farm pond that never been mapped before. We mapped it in a John boat. So if you go to an area or a creek or something that's never been mapped, you can actually map the area yourself. You can upload it to make it private or you can share it with everybody else if you want to. Um, you can do that through your phone or on through your uh, plotter if you want to. Some of the advanced options that we have on our um, charts that after one year, if you haven't renewed your chart, you will lose these features. Uh, one of them is shallow water markers. What this is, is being able to shade um, an area. It's kind of hard to see on these, but I, I've got an arrow, red arrow pointing to the little red dots. I marked three foot on this. So anything that's three foot or shallower will have those little red dots on there. Um, we also, uh, have a feature called fishing ranges where the fishing ranges let's say you're catching fish in 24 to 30 feet and you want to see that all over the lake you can set it on your plotters uh, and, and, and see it highlighted a little bit better on your plotters one of the cool features on some of the new plotters that are out there now is this Wi-Fi capability or Bluetooth capability this can work in your advantage. One of the ways that it does that is if there's an update available for that mapping area, you can now update it without pulling the chip out of the machine. If you can get it to hook to a Wi-Fi, you can update the chip while it's still plugged in the machine. You never had to pull it out. Ray Marine, if you want to see their new unit, we've got it over there in the booth. You actually plug the chip in the back of the unit. So if it's flush mounted in your uh, boat, you're not gonna be able to reach back there and grab it out anyway. So with the new Wi-Fi capability, you update the chip while it's on there. Um, this is a pretty cool idea of, of some of the mapping that we've done in the past. This is an area off Maine where our guys said the mapping was horrible. And they took out one of the boats, one of the captains locally. And you can see on the left what it looked like before and on the right, they made it this uh, sonar chart. So you can do that with sonar chart live, very, very simple. Um, this is an area we did in Florida on a, a couple little ponds around Kissimmee, just showing you how easy and simple it is. Um, there is a lot of tutorials and videos on our website. You can also look at our YouTube channel. My biggest focus on the YouTube channel, just so you folks know, I think if a video is two minutes to three minutes, you can get everything you need to know. If you get in there and you want to watch a video that's 30 minutes, you done lost me after five because I'm bored already. So we try, one of the focuses I've done with all of my people that make videos is we try to hit highlighted areas and we try to do it in two to three minutes and then move on to the next one. If you want to learn about sonar chart, I got something on there that's five minutes long. I got some on there that are 30 minutes long, but nobody watches them. You can look at the numbers and see the people of what they watch them. But the same way with your phone app, and we'll talk about it here in a minute, you can also do sonar chart live through your phone if you have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth capable. All the new Lowrance units, the whole high-end Humminbird Solixes, uh, the Simurad units, and even the new Ray Marines, you can do that. Uh, and you can watch on your phone, like this is a picture of a tablet, just watching the um, live. 
So as long as they have Wi-Fi capable, these units I know have them. Uh, the new live series, Gen 3 and the carbons, you could do all that on those guys. But it, this is what it kind of looks like when you're doing the sonar chart live. This was an area that wasn't even mapped. It was brown on the lake. And we just went through there and, and swept it and uh, what I call cutting the grass. And we created this lake map. Um, my buddy was just amazed. I mean, his family had lived on this property for over 50 years and they'd never seen a map. They'd never seen topo or nothing. And we created this. It took us about two hours and it's pretty amazing. So uh, just a quick overview of the products. Um, I know I hit a bunch of stuff real quick, but Navionics, the Regents card is just plug and play. There is five miles off the coastal. That chart sells for 149. I know some of you came by the booth. I'll tell you a deal in century right now. Cabela's and Bass Pro have that chart on sale for 119.99. And if you have an old chart, you can also get the rebate. That's a deal. Uh, but check that out. Um, the Navionics, uh, US and Canada is 199. That's the bundle one we talked about. The updates chart's 99 bucks. That's if you have an old chart. And then also, the big thing is talking about what the features are. Daily updates is something, and we mentioned it quickly, but we're on average about 20,000 updates a week. So if you have a map card or you have the app on your phone, hit the update button. You'd be amazed at what, what's updating over there um, in the sonar charts. I'll go quickly just through the app, tell you a couple things about it. Still the number one selling app in the iTunes and Google Play Store. Um, it's been amazing to watch this thing grow in the two years I've been here. I tell people all the time, and I said it before, I have the coolest job in the world. The first day I got hired, I was in uh, Warham, Massachusetts, and my boss took me fishing. <laughs> I was, first question was, hey, show us your Navionics app. I said, I don't have one. He said, can we fire you now or later? <laughs> I said, I said, I'll download it. <laughs> he goes, why don't you have it? I said, my last phone I dropped in the lake a week ago. <laughs> so uh, I've been highly educated on the app. I use it a lot now. I've learned so much about it in that I think I almost know too much sometimes, but I do get stumped every once in a while um, also. A couple little things you need to learn on the, about the app. The little sounder button on the bottom left-hand corner is government charts, Navionics, and sonar charts. The government charts are going away on the new app if you download it. Um, that was something Noah gave us years and years ago, and nobody uses it. The sonar charts are the truly the one-foot contours. Um, you want to make sure that's turned on. This particular one, I had the sonar chart live button turned on because I was trying to record some stuff while we were out on the water. You can turn that off or on. Um, somebody was asking me, this is a pretty cool thing too. I'm, I'm gonna sail over to the Bahamas or I'm going somewhere fishing. Satellites, you know, the cell service is real bad. It doesn't matter. We're not using cell service. We're using the satellite actually off the phone. So the government layer, which a lot of people wanted to see what it looks like. It looks like that. That's the free map that you can get online and sometimes they actually download it onto your unit uh, and it's considered free. The nautical stuff is 10 foot uh, depth contours. It still has buoy markers and stuff like that. And then the sonar chart to me is the best map that's available. That's your one foot contours and everything else we talked about before. One other thing that's pretty neat about the app that we have available is called icons or point of interest. You can hit the little button up there in the top corner and you can mark, you know, anything uh, areas that you want to do. If you're looking for uh, marine apparel while you're out on the water and you want to go find some clothing somewhere, you can look in the nearest, find who sells it or a dive shop. Um, the menu button down on the bottom, there's a lot of control features that are built through that. One of the ones is being able to check the weather. Um, you can, you can hit the little error cursor to where you're at, and then you can hit the question mark and pull up the menu and you can pick up the Florida, the particular that area where I was in Florida, what the weather was that particular day. So you, any area around you, it tells you the winds, tells you the tides, features like that. 
You can also add a marker to it if you wanted to. Um, if you go to this inlet area and you notice that marker buoy is missing, you can also put your finger on it. You can hit a question mark on it and you, you can actually make a marker or make a note on it. You could drop a marker on that particular thing to add it to it. You could call it something if you want to. Some people put missing buoy marker. Um, this particular feature wasn't on our app when it first started. And uh, our boss, the original owner of Navionics, hit a brock pile with his uh, sailboat. And he says, we got to come up with a way to do this. So they created this marker system so that you can warn people and it actually becomes the community edit part of it. If you want to know the tides, for example, of the area, you can click on the little weather button over there on the side and it'll tell you the tides. If you want the detailed tides, you can actually click further into it down at the bottom left and actually get all the highs and lows and times and all that stuff. The community edit part of it, to me, are the little bitty signs that you see. They're a little green uh, circle with a, a cross on them. Those are little points of interest. They could be good diving places. It could be a fishing spot. A funny story about that is uh, over on Kentucky Lake, I got a phone call last fall from one of my guys and he says, hey, he said, I just pulled up my app and I'm over here practicing for Kentucky Lake and my name is right down here by the dam where I caught all my fish and won that tournament last year. I said, really? He said, I said, okay, tell me where you're at. And he gave me the Latin long. I pulled up the app and look, there it is. Edwin Evers, winning spot. <laughs> I said, okay, you want to delete it? And he goes, yeah. I said, put your finger on the cursor. He goes, okay, I did it. He just pulled it up. I said, now scroll down to the bottom and look at the red button that says delete. He goes, yeah. I said, hit delete. He deleted it. He goes, it's not on there anymore. I said, I know. That's why community edits, you have control of them. He, goes, he called me back about 30 minutes later. He goes, hey, I know where Van Dam was fishing over here last year. Somebody else has marked that spot. So the community edits are for us as a community to use them. You can mark fishing spots if you want to. I don't do that, but I do mark hazards that I see stuff. If there's a floating log or something big log that you see that you think your buddies need to know about, that'd be something that I'd want to do. Another cool thing you can do on the app is you can measure distance. And down at the bottom where those calipers are, you can measure how far it is to a certain place. Let's say you're gonna run a certain location. You can tell how far it is if you've got enough gas to get there and back. The advanced map option is probably the most popular thing we've added in a long time where we got color shading as part of the app now. You can do this multiple different ways. You can pick different depths, different styles of fish, different areas you can change it to different colors so you can move back and forth one of the questions i get from the most people about this particular part of the app is hey my fishing ranges aren't working on my phone i said okay did you pay for the app uh i don't know i said you didn't your two weeks ran out and it cuts it off so you lose a couple of features such as shallow water and the advanced map options after the after the two weeks so if you want that feature, just renew your app. Um, this is the shallow water marker that we got. Everybody laughs about my pink ducks, but this is why we got pink ducks. It's a kind of an underwater, it's a water mark. But also all these red dots that you see on the screen, you can set that for uh, your shallow water markings. This particular one, I got it set on 15 foot, so it shows me everything 15 foot because I'm not going to fish there. And that way I can stay out deeper and fish. The cool thing about this app to me, mostly going on what's going on now with the water and how much water is in the lakes, you can actually change the water level on the app. This is one of the coolest advanced features that I think is available on this app. If your lake's up four feet like mine is at home, you can actually adjust it and it'll move the settings for you. So when you go up on that hump that's supposed to be four foot and the lake's up four foot, now it's eight foot and it'll tell you it's eight foot. There is another pretty cool feature that you can do. It's called satellite overlay if you're fishing an area. A lot of uh, redfish inshore guys like this feature. It lays the satellite actually over the contour lines in the lake. Can't do this with many things. This is kind of interesting to look at the uh, bottom color of the of depth of what satellite imaging shows you. Uh, 
One of the other things to do is, that, for example, if you live in Atlanta, Georgia, where I do, and you fish just in that area, if you travel over to Lake Sam Rayburn to go fishing at a tournament or something, you got you can update those areas so you can when it, the map, the uh, app figures out where you're at. If you're going to a new lake, getting ready to practice at a new lake, let's say you're traveling to a tournament, you can actually pick that area and download it and start studying it before you actually get there, and you can do that through the app. Um, if you don't have it, I don't know why. Um, I tell people all the time, it's free. I mean, everybody likes free stuff. Use it for two weeks. Figure out if it's something you would use. Try it at your next tournament. Put it on your phone and try it and see and look at it and see what you think about it. Um, the last thing I'll leave you with is the, to give you just a brief, brief overview of what our plan is. In October of last year, Garmin purchased Navionics and they've made some really drastic changes to the mapping world and they're fixing to freak everybody out here in about uh, a week uh, with some great new mapping they've come out with. They have taken their G2 mapping and the boats on the water and the Navionics mapping and they combined them and made probably the greatest map I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it is incredible, not just because I work for the company, but it is more advanced than I've ever seen it before. If you go online, there's some, a couple pictures of it to kind of show you what it is. But what we've done is combine these two maps together and now you all have the maps that you see on the app or the same maps you're gonna see on the Garmin unit. Plus, they're updating. They, Garmin last year only did 50 lakes mapping. Next year they plan to do 150 lakes. So we'll be able to update 300 new lakes or up, redo some maps on the other apps. It's called G G3 is the new map. It's ocean and lakes. The lakes as of last email I got was 150 lakes. So you probably have to look at the map if you're using a Garmin product, figure out if your lake is on there. But the, like I said earlier, this is a test for us as a company. We've drawn a line straight down the middle of the United States and we're having an east and a west chart. That's all we're having, it's two charts. Uh, they're $199 what I last remember them talking about the pricing of them. If, if for some reason I'm talking above your head and you have an older uh, plotter of some kind, we also have something called a compatibility guide on our website. I know one of my favorite units ever was the Lowrance LMS 520. Uh, I just, that was the best unit I've ever used in my life. It just did everything I wanted to do when I was bass fishing at the time. If you have one of those units now, you can still go on our website, look at the compatibility guide and figure out what chart will work in your depth finder. You might not be under the budget of you need to buy a new plotter, but you want a new map. So this way you can go on there and you can click on. When all else fails, you can go down to the bottom there, click devices, and then you pull up the compatibility chart and you select, and it'll tell you if you're running a what is this, North Star 6100, the only thing that'll work in your map is a Navionics Regions card, nothing else will work. So just little things like that. Some people are happy with the plotters they have, but we wanna be able to let them use something. Um, that's the same slide. Uh, how can we help? To me, the biggest thing, a couple things we've done. One is we have the coolest search engine next to Google that I know that's out there. You can go on our Google, on our search engine, type in a question and there's a good chance a video or a uh, article will come up or a brief overview of what it is. Example I used the other day and I used this one of my pro staff guys. He didn't know what an NTAG was. An NTAG is our computer number that we put on our map cards. With NTAG, I educated him on what it was real quick because I sent him a link to it and said, read this. I don't have time to tell you what it is. And that's the way you get educated on the product. If all else fails, you can go down to the bottom there where it says live chat. And I talked about this earlier. Pops up on the screen and they start talking to you. Um, if for some reason you can't uh, figure out what they're talking about, you can always give them your phone number and they'll call you at the earliest convenience. Um, I'll be happy to take any questions if I can help people at all. Yes, sir. <clears throat> what, what would be the, the, the reason to buy the $200 chip as opposed to just having the app? What would be the advantage 
of paying the two hundred dollars. Do you have a way to? Okay, so he wanted to know about the app versus the two hundred dollar um, chart. Um, do you have a way to keep your phone charged all the time on the boat yeah. or a tablet? Yeah. So that's a deal. That's the that, same thing. Yeah. My and I'll tell you my futuristic goal. When y'all hear this, y'all will be going what? I, I, my future in fishing industry. My prediction is within five years, you won't see a map card anymore. Because I think what people will be doing is using tablets and iPhones, and they'll be able to link it to their chart plotter, and that map will show up on their plotter if they own a subscription to Navionics. I honestly think within five years it'll be there. The reason why I tell you that is because on the new Lawrence and on the new Humminbird, if you get a phone call from your wife, it pops up on the screen and says, your wife's calling or whoever, whatever her name is. Yeah, or you get text message. So it's connected through Bluetooth. It's connected through the Bluetooth to do that. I think eventually within five years, you'll see that. Um, we talked about it last year, just saying, hey, I, I tell them all the time when we go to these big meetings with our whole company, I'm the guy that sits in the back of the room that goes, hey, what are we doing next year? I don't care about next month. I'm thinking about next year. What are we doing in five years? What are we doing in 10 years? Um, and that's, that's always been my philosophy. I've, we're, uh, this year, one of the things that's really not a secret anymore, but Navionics is planning to go back to iCast. We haven't been in iCast in five years. Why are we going to iCast? Well, we got something to show you. That's why we're going. So it's like we're planning ahead, and I think that's the future of fishing. Though. I mean, everybody, everything's on your phone now. I mean, my wife's girlfriend the other day was telling me she was over the house for dinner. She can control the heat and the air conditioner in her house on her phone. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, where's the map card? It's got to be the future, I think. So, but you're right. I mean, if you got a good tablet, it's waterproof. You got power source to it. I can't tell you which one to buy, but it makes sense to me. We have more people that talk about the tablet than we do anything. Pro fisherman Josh Douglas fishes the FLW for me, runs a wrap Navionics boat. He's got an app on his dash next to his big old Lorenz. I feel like so. fish finder with sonar side scan and down scan. Yep. I don't have a place for a map. Think about what I talked about earlier in there. He was talking about using all his electronics. Think about the processor with inside the com your, your computer you're looking at. That is, to me, we have to continue thinking about that. And that's what I said when I was talking about earlier with my bosses going, hey, we can increase this card and make it bigger, but guess what? It ain't gonna work the same. If it's smaller, it works faster. So that's just an idea. Any other questions I can help you with? Hey, our booth is uh, down uh, about three quarters of the way down on the left, uh, next to Ripple Lips and Garmin. We're all there together. Please stop by and see us. We got all the maps on display and different plotters. Be more than happy to help you. And uh, meet Greg. He's one of you guys. He's a catfisher. And uh, thank you very much. Appreciate you coming out.